book, stand up with me and turn to number 629. And uh, we're going to sing Love Lifted Me and give you a chance to get out and uh, greet one another, then come back and sing the last verse. So on that first verse, number 629, Love Lifted Me. And there's a reason why you have to sing this standing up. And I hope you know what that is. So Love Lifted Me, number 629 on that first verse. Here we go. Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply sing within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. for a moment, would you please?
All right, let's come on back to your seats. Grab your songbooks again, number 629. We're going to sing that third verse, number 629. Love lifted me on the third verse. Here we go. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry ways. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. may be seated we got pick a hymn night and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with that right now unless you want to yeah, add something a, in here just a, uh, something here look at the turn to the back of your hymn book and go to the very last song I think it's 682 or something like that God of our fathers all right turn the page after you get to 682 and you'll see a, a page that says subject index all right, the next page says topical index, and you'll find all kind of topics that there are songs that are arranged under. Look at, turn the page again, and look at down at the bottom of the first page there in front of you where it says C choruses. The left page at the very bottom on the right hand side of it says choruses. If you counted them, and I have before, there are 100 choruses in this songbook. Some of them you know, some you may not know. So when just be thinking about it. Maybe a song that you want to do, you can pick a hymn, that's no problem. And I remember, if you, we don't know it, guess who has to sing it, okay? All right, you may have to sing it, all right? Choruses, but there's plenty of choruses, some you might already know, okay? Uh, you may be seated, by the way, okay? All right, choruses. So be thinking about that as, uh, as you're picking out songs tonight. Now, after the service, we've got all kind of green food. St. Patrick's Day weekend, and uh, we're going to have some green food. Got everything from green grapes to green apples, Matt told me, sour apples. So all kind of good stuff back there. So take time and fellowship tonight. Originally, we planned to spend that time with Brother Bob Holmes, but he had to get back for an appointment. So, you pray for him. He's heading to Wisconsin on Tuesday. I hope you enjoyed Bob being with us today. He has a passion for souls. God give us a passion for souls. People are dying without Christ today. And so, um, got a little present we're going to give to you halfway through, halfway through the message. Okay? All right. Daniel? All righty. So, let me see. Okay, hold on. Let's put the hands down. Let's let's try to do this fair. Okay. I didn't say go. Okay, whoever has a song ready. I didn't say raise your hand. Whoever has a song ready, raise your hand. Carter. <laughs> Number 142. All right, let's go to number 142. All right, I know this one. So Carter doesn't have to come up here and sing a special. I know you really wanted to. All right, on that first verse, number 142, Because He Lives.
Have you ever sat at an intersection where the green light was on and you're just kind of sitting there? That, that was kind of like that. It's, oh, I start now? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Mr. Luke. 475. There we go. I can hear it a little bit better now. 475. Are we there yet? Make me a blessing, number 475. All right, we'll do that first verse. Make me a blessing. Don't be afraid if you uh, have not sang this song before or uh, it's been a long time. You'll catch on once we start singing. <clears throat> Out in the highways and byways of life, many are weary and sad. Carry the sunshine where darkness is rife, making the sorrowing glad. Make me a blessing, make me a blessing out of my life. May Jesus shine, make me a blessing, O oh Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone to a blessing to someone. All right, we'll go. I'm going to try to sweep the room. We're going to see how that goes. Abigail. 444. I've got a mansion. I love this song. This is great. <clears throat> Number 444. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk the streets that are pure as gold. Amen. All right, Mr. Jerry, 317. Let us go to 317. All right. I know this one, too. This is great. He looked in the chorus index. <laughs> Number 317, I am blessed. <clears throat> I can say we can sing the whole song. That'd be great. <laughs> All right, are we ready? Here we go. I am blessed, I am blessed Every day that I live I am blessed When I wake up in the morning Till I lay my head to rest I am blessed, I am blessed Amen. Should turn that down just a touch, Eli. We're, we're a tad loud. In here. I know, it's learning stuff. Nate. 478. You're going to have to come here and help me sing that song. Well, come here, Mr. American, because I actually was born not in America. <laughs> no? You want to you wanna pick a different one? Because I don't know this song. Well, we're going to have to go to a different song because. Oh, did he? Oh, that is a lot different than 478. All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we, we could do this song. All right. First verse, number 678. Uh, Miss Amy, you don't have to sing this one. All right, let's go ahead and stand. 
I love subtle reminders. We have the flag back here. Make sure you take a look at the flag and face the flag when we sing the song, okay? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled Zachary. 643. I'm going to have to speed up my canvassing of the room here. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Number 643. Uh, let me see. We'll have the guys come down and do the offering after this song, after we sing this first verse, and we'll continue with some more picking hymns. All right, number 643. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus my Savior I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy I am telling, He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Now you gotta hold it up for him, so <laughs> you can just pick it up, brother. <laughs> All right, let's pray. Our gracious heavenly Father, we do thank you for the beautiful day you've blessed us with and the privilege it is to gather here today and to hear your word. We ask that you would bless this message and this time of fellowship afterwards for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And pray for Jerry. So. <laughs> So back to pick him. We're going to start on the right side. Right side. You weren't prepared? <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you time to prepare. Okay, Miss Hall, and then we'll uh, get a few more in this section. 661. All right. Can, or God can do anything but fail. I like this song. God can do anything.
God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. He can save, He can cleanse any. God can do anything but fail. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. God can do anything, anything, anything. God can do anything but fail. Amen. All right. Josh, what you got? Number three. Ooh, I like that one. You know, that's in the worship hymn section. Number three. All right, come thou fount on that first verse, number three. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Amen. All right. What's up, Eric? 541? Okay. It's okay to give your hymnal a workout. 541, set my soul afire. I like this one. All right. Think of this when you remember the message that you heard this morning. Set my soul afire, Lord, for thy holy word. Burn it deep within me. Let your voice be heard. Millions rope in day and hour, I will be your witness, fill me with thy power, set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire, make my life a witness of thy saving power. Millions grope in darkness, waiting for thy word. Set my soul afire, Lord, set my soul afire. All right, let's go to Miss Aaron. Say that again, please. 393. Blessed Assurance. I love this song. Number 393. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Thank you, that was a good one. All right, Miss Mary. 279. Okay, we've got time for a couple more after this. Number 279. In the Garden. Oh, man, y'all picking some good ones tonight. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on mine ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks 
with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Amen. Alright, Miss Dawn? 640. Ooh, I like this one. Let's talk about Jesus. I like that. Let's talk about Jesus. The King of Kings is He. The Lord of Lords supreme through all eternity. The great I am, the way, the truth, the life, the door. Let's talk about Jesus more and more. All right, Andrew. Let me get our last song for the evening, Andrew. Huh? 402. Did you just remember your song? <laughs> you just found it? <laughs> oh, man. Number 402. I might be able to catch yours. This is the chorus. Here we go. In 402, nothing is possible. Nothing is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His Word. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Then put your trust in God alone and rest upon His Word. For everything, yes, everything, yes, everything is possible with God. Okay. One more, yes. Okay. One twelve. Is this a Christmas song? <laughs> That's an appropriate song. And what do you want, preacher? 630. Okay, number 112, and then 630, and then I'll let the real singer sing. Okay, thank you all for letting me get up here, but uh, it's just really God is looking at your hearts when you're singing. I hope that is your attitude when you're singing today. All right, number 112, and then number 630 after this. Here we go. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so i'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Amen Alright, let's turn to number 630 This is our last hymn, so why don't y'all stand with me all right, it's just like his great love. We'll sing the first and the last on this one. Number 630, it's just like his great love. A friend I have called Jesus, whose love is strong and true, and never fails however tis tried, no matter what I do, I sinned against this love of His. But when I knelt to pray, confessing all my guilt to Him, the sin clouds rolled away. It's 
It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine, of all His care and tenderness for this poor life of mine. His love is in and over all, and wind and waves obey. When Jesus whispers, peace be still, and rolls the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus. <clears throat> it's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like His great love. That it might be in my name, a shining legacy. I thought, I thought it, it might be in a goal for success to follow me. I thought it might be in a plan to sail across the seas, but, but I, I didn't, didn't find what I really need. I found it all. When I lost everything, gave my life to serve a risen King. I found the truth that I've been searching for. I found it all when I found the Lord. I'm letting go of all my ways. That I think are best for me I'm laying down all my ideas Of what I think my life should be I'm leaving everything I am Right at Jesus' feet For it's here I find Everything I need I found it all when I lost everything and gave my life To serve the risen King I found the truth That I've been searching for I found it all When I found the Lord I found it all when I lost everything and gave my life To serve a risen King I found the truth That I've been searching for I found the all When I found the Lord I found the truth that I've been searching for, I found it all when I found the Lord. I found it all when I found the Brother Jerry Daniel ended after the offering. He said, y'all pray for Brother Jerry. I think we need to pray for ourselves in dealing with Brother Jerry. Amen. 
he was at camp with me, and <clears throat> I know the Lord has ways of placing folks in your life. <laughs> and I said, you know, you remember that passage where it said, my grace is sufficient for thee. <laughs> My strength is made perfect in weakness. And Paul asked the Lord three times, did he take away that thorn in the flesh? <laughs> and the Lord said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the second time the Lord said, no. <laughs> the third time, no. Well, amen. Much grace and much blessing, brother. Amen. He's been a tremendous blessing to me, and I thank God for him and Erica, that's for sure. And for each and every one of you. <clears throat> you know, the Lord is good in so many, many ways. Okay, I'm going to turn this one off, Eli, and we're going to the one here. Did you notice Bob Holmes using the microphone handheld this morning? Because he's so used to doing that. I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to use this one here. All right, can you hear me now? I'm going to turn this one off, and we'll make sure this one is, is one doing it. I said this morning we took a look at the Israeli flag. It's right behind Kevin over here. And it's got a border of blue. And it did not hit me until I started thinking about this border of blue, or ribbon of blue, that the Israelites had in the border in the fringes of their garment. Now, I don't know if that was the color. You know, I'm, I'm assuming that was the color. I don't think Israel would probably want a flag that wasn't associated with that color that they had from many years ago. So let's go there in the Word of God this, this evening. Numbers chapter 15. And I'm going to show you where the ribbon of blue is. We would spell it R-I-B-B-O-N. Uh, the Bible here is spelling it R-I-B-B-A-N-D. And as we go along, I want to try to give you some thoughts on the ribbon of blue. And uh, then we're going to go to one other passage, Lord willing, tonight. I do have several scriptures I want to share with you as we go along. And not as many as I normally do, and, uh, but I think it will be a blessing to you. What is the ribbon of blue? Um, halfway through the message... Uh, Amy has got a bunch of this blue ribbon. We got it as close as we could to the color of the Israeli flag and that you can put in your Bible. And I'll try to explain why. Uh, if you want to keep, you don't have to, if you feel led to do, is a reminder. Because this is one of the things in the story here of why they had to use the ribbon of blue. Look at verse number 37. 37 near the end of Numbers chapter 15. <clears throat> Numbers 15 and verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto... I hear pages still moving, so I'll wait. Okay. I love to hear pages in the Bible moving so folks can meet me right there with it. All right. Verse, uh, un, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 38 of Numbers 15. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders, you might want to highlight it, circle it, whatever, a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart, and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Now, this was a regulation that God set up, a command, yea, really a command to have this border of blue along the borders of the garments of the Israelites, okay? And it was uh, given by the Lord to do so. Uh, think of a scripture verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 says, Now all these things happened unto them 
Let me just don't turn there because I have several places I want us to go. Now these things were our examples. 1 Corinthians 10 and 6. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them. What did happen unto these Israelites in the Old Testament? It happened unto them for ensamples. The Old English word, we would get examples. Okay? All right, it says here, And they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. So there's a reason for this, this fringe of blue. It's going to admonish us in three separate ways, all right? Number one, tonight. It was an aid to help them remember have you ever gotten uh, someone says to you, hey, or your wife says to you, honey, I need you to run to the store, pick up a few items. Oh, I'll remember it. Okay. And she gives you just a short little list. I remember when I was a teenager and I had gotten my driver's license. And man, I just couldn't wait to drive. And I was driving and loving it. Mama said, I want you to go up to Earl's Market. Uh, did they have Earl's Market on the peninsula over here years ago? Did they? Okay, there's a, it was an Earl's Market, probably about a couple miles from our house. I want you to go, and this is what I want you to get. And, and she said, now write it down. So I wrote it down on the list, you know. I got in that car, man, I was ready to go, Jerry, just get down the road, you know. Having a good time. I wish I had a Lincoln Town car back then, Abby, but I didn't. And I got to Earl's Market, and I got in, and I'm so proud. I'm going to pick up the groceries, a few items from Mama, you know, help Mama out here a little bit, and I get to drive to do it. And I got inside the store, and I started to get that grocery cart out, and I started looking. There were no cell phones back then. I had to use, I think, either the store phone or the, a pay phone. Because I knew one thing. Don't come back home if you don't get those items, okay? So I called her up, and guess what, Mama? I forgot the list. <laughs> so sometimes you take, the old thing was taking a string, tie it to your finger, you know, to help you remember it. How many did that, and then you forgot what the string was uh, to remind you of? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not I'm here by myself then. All right. But they did were to do it in, a, in an aid to memory. Uh, to wear this ribbon of blue, every time the one Israelite came upon another Israelite, they both saw the ribbon of blue. It was to remind them of something, okay? It was to aid them in, in remembering. I love that little story of the new preacher who comes to the pastor of the church, and he was in uh, visiting a lady that someone told him to go visit and try to witness to her, and, and uh, she, he got inside. She led him inside the place, and he thought, oh, I'm a witness to this lady. He said, ma'am, do you think about the hereafter? She said, I have you no know, preacher. I think about the hereafter all the time. What do you mean? Well, I go to my kitchen and I think about the hereafter. I go to my bedroom and I think about the hereafter. And I finally get to the living room and I think, what in the world am I hereafter? <laughs> well, the Israelites never had to go there. They always knew what that ribbon of blue was for. And it had a definite purpose in it. It had a good reason. It was to remind them of the one who had wrought deliverances for them. Uh, it was to remind them of something heavenly. Is this the color alone? The color of blue, the skies, reminds you of heaven. You know. So how would you like, isn't that great? Isn't that great to be reminded of heaven every day of your life? You get up and you put on that clothing. And you got that ribbon of blue around the borders. Hey, I'm going to heaven. Praise God. You know, I'm saved because of what Jesus did for me. So it reminds us of uh, deliverances God does in our life, but it also reminds us of a heavenly color. It's heavenly blue. Number two, it was not only to remind them, but it was to stir them on to obedience. What did it say in that scripture there? In verse 39 again, And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. What am I supposed to remember? I'm supposed to remember God's commandments and then do them. So I wasn't just to hear it. I was supposed to be a doer of the word. That you may look upon it and remember all the commandments and do them. Uh, the remembering was not just sentimental, not just 
okay, I see the blue, beautiful blue color. No, it was also to remind them they had something to do. Their heavenly mindedness was to be linked with their obedient godliness in their life. When they saw that ribbon, hey, I've got to go back to the Word. I've got to hear what Moses said in the law. I've got to obey. I've got to do what God told me to do. God delivered me. God has got a home for me in heaven. All that was combined to get them to do what God told them to do. And of course, you know, they, they always tried to get out of that. But that, that robe and that, that ribbon of blue was to help them. It was a mark of separation. What did it say there in verse number 40? That ye may remember and do all my commandments, memory, obey the commandments, and be holy unto your God. They were to be separated unto the Lord. They were a separated people. I don't know if the rest of the world knows or not, but when Israel flies that flag over Jerusalem and over that nation, they're saying as they did thousands of years ago, they are a separated people unto the Lord because He chose them. Christian, we may not have a blue ribbon on each day, but in our hearts and minds, we are a separated people, not only separated from sin, but we're separated unto the Lord and His commandments. To obey the Lord is a good thing. It's good for us to help us. It symbolized a blue border symbolizing separation unto the Lord. Separation to the wearer and the watcher. In other words, the person who's wearing the blue border, every time they put their clothes on, every time they put their clothes on, I have to be holy today. Whoa. Whoa. How would you like a reminder every day you get up that you have to be holy today? We do, including the preacher. We all have to, right? We have to be holy today. But it also was a symbol to the others of other nations and even of their own people as they moved about their people that not only the wearer of the blue, but the watcher of the blue had to be holy unto the Lord, their creator. The one who made them. So it's a precious thing. This speaks of Christ as separated unto His people. We are separated people, the Word of God talks about. Titus 2.14, Jesus, who gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar or peculiarly His people, zealous of good works. 1 Peter 2.9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. He's talking to Christians there in 1 Peter 2 9. Peter's talking to Christians, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, what did Brother Bob speak on this morning? Into his marvelous light. So the ribbon of blue is to remind us that we are holy people unto the Lord. Yeah. Wives and husbands, here you go. Ephesians chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? That he might sanctify it, set it apart, holiness, and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How do you get a holy life? You get a holy life by getting to the word of God and let it get into you. Okay, and changing and obeying the Scriptures, changing the things in your life that are not pleasing to the Lord. That He might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present it to Himself a glorious church. The Lord wants a glorious church. Church without having, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You know what God's goal for His church is? That she be like Christ, the head and should be holy unto the Lord. Uh, I guess it wouldn't hurt us to wear a ribbon of blue sometimes. Be holy unto the Lord. Um, that's what God would have us to be. He'd have us to ever be remembering Himself, for He loved us and He died for us. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial or Satan? 
Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? The Bible says, it goes on, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and I walk in them. Thank you, Lord. And I will be with their God, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, holy, separated unto the Lord, saith the Lord. And not, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. There are blessings for being a holy people unto the Lord. He wants us to remember it and to obey uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't obedience like the Pharisees. The Pharisees was a hypocritical obedience. They didn't please the Lord at all. And Jesus rebuked them over it all. <clears throat> Samuel said about Saul, to obey it is better than sacrifice. There has to be a continuing thoroughgoing of godliness in our lives. They wore the clothing with a ribbon of blue every day, as we said. Let's put on holiness every day in our lives. Baptist churches have gotten away from preaching on the holiness of God. We need that holiness to steer us to what is right. I'm preaching on the Ten Commandments on Wednesday night. Well, might as well just pull it out now. Where is it at? On Wednesday night, this is what we're saying. This is the law. Now, the law has been fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay? But here's you and me measured up to that law. We can't. But the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. We had not known sin except the law had said, Thou shalt not sin, or thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, and all the other things that it talked about. Thank God for the law. Thank God that Jesus fulfilled the law. And now I'm to measure up to his moral standards and his moral law. There were three laws. Preacher, I thought there was only one. There were three laws. Before Sinai and the Ten Commandments, there was a law of morals or consciousness. I mean, you go, I was reading, sharing Wednesday night with our, with our folks in the Wednesday night Bible study. And there was this country this missionary went to, and, and they had never heard the gospel. They never heard anything about Christianity. And he started witnessing to them, giving them the gospel, sharing the gospel story. And they... He asked them a question. He says, is there any, any laws that you have? Do you know that 70% of the Ten Commandments they had as laws? Quite interesting that they had as laws. They knew. And it, there is one law in the Ten Commandments that just about every nation on the face of the earth does try to follow, thou shalt not kill. They do know some morality, the law of consciousness, the law of the Word of God, the Ten Commandments, and then the law of Jesus Christ. And Christ took it a step farther. Uh-oh, preacher, that's not very encouraging. What did Jesus say? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. But if a man looks on a woman and lusts after her in his, own, in his heart, he has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Thou shalt not kill. Yes, but. If you hate your brother, it's the it, same as if you were killing them. Wow. The only way you can live up to the law of Jesus Christ is to separate yourself unto him. He'll help you to live that law, that law of, of Christ in our lives as he fulfilled it. There must be a thorough godliness, going, going of godliness. Mark of separation to cling about us at all times, continually, is what it's going to be in your life, okay? Amy, where's my ribbons of blue? Did she go? Where'd she go? Maybe she went to get the ribbons of blue. You got them? All right, beautiful, Belle. If you can start passing out, if you have some other folks to help you. I, I said to Amy, I said, I want something the folks can take home on Sunday night, and here's an example of it. It's just a simple ribbon. You can use it as a bookmark in your Bible or another book or whatever. But just if you would, kind of think about it and uh, let God touch your heart. That we're to be a holy people unto the Lord. While they're doing that, I want you to turn to one other place in the scriptures with me, okay? 
Turn back a book to Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter number 19, okay? I'm going to read a verse to us here that will help us better understand what does it mean to be holy. And there are th several things, three things that we can see as reasons why we as God's people ought to be holy and set as examples of how to be holy. You know, we hear, be holy, be holy for I am holy. Yes, God has designed it, God has said it, God has spoken it. It's a command of the Lord. Now, how can we be holy? Is there any help, preacher? How am I going to stand up to the, more, to the law of Jesus Christ? If it's even more than the Ten Commandments had. Again, the Ten Commandments were fulfilled in Christ. Well, how can I do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. In Leviticus chapter number 19 and verse number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now, what are the first five books of the Old Testament? What are they called? The Pentateuch. Penta meaning five. Pentagon. Penta meaning five. Well, the first book's written by the Holy Spirit through His servant Moses, right? All right? Written through Moses. If you study the five books of the Bible, first five books, Genesis, we see man sinning against God and ruined in the fall. In Exodus, we see redemption through the power of God as He delivered the children of Israel uh, across the Red Sea, which is a great picture of salvation in Christ Jesus. In Leviticus, He shows us the fellowship. Why do we have grounds for fellowship with God? It's based on the atonement that the high priest would go in and do for the nation of Israel based on God's atonement through the blood, which later on Jesus Christ would give at, at the cross of Calvary to take away our sin, not just to atone. Not just, atonement means at one minute with God, but it means to cover our sin. But Jesus, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about He is there to not only do uh, the atone for our sins, but He's to take away our sins all through the blood of Jesus Christ. In the book of Numbers, God shows His guidance in the pilgrimage as they wandered through the wilderness. And in the book of Deuteronomy, the destination finally gets, comes to its completion, and Joshua gets ready to lead them into the promised land. In Genesis, we see God's sovereignty. In Exodus, we see His divine power. In Leviticus, we see His holiness. In Numbers, we see His goodness. And, and of course, His also severity against sin. In Deuteronomy, we see His divine faithfulness. He's going to carry His people across into that promised land after these 40 years of wandering in the, in the wilderness. So as you study the books, the middle of the five is Leviticus. Leviticus is broken up into two sections, 1 through 17 and then it goes 18 through 27. 1 through 17 relates to all the articles and things that are in the tabernacle. Every piece inside the tabernacle, the table of the showbread, the light stand, the lamp stand, uh, the, the oil, the uh, prayers of incense, everything inside the tabernacle represented as a picture of Jesus Christ. So it shows that in our relationship to God. Then we come to 18, 18 and through 27, it's our conduct and how we are to live that life of holiness unto God because we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Okay? So part one shows the basis of our fellowship with God in Leviticus. Part two talks about our behavior and how we've been called unto holiness. Say, preacher, I don't know about this thing about holiness. I don't know if I could do this thing, you know. Well, I got news for us. We can't. But God can, and God will help you. And I'm going to give you very three simple things, and then we're going to stop, and we're going to have fellowship in the back. You ready? Number one, to make this as practical as possible, we are to be as holy as God says He's holy. God the Father is the standard of our holiness. After the doings in the land of Egypt, God says, I don't want you to do and worship the gods of the land of Egypt, and I don't want you worshiping the gods of the land of Canaan in which you're going into. Look at the gods that you came from and you saw, and the gods that you're going to. That's not to worship you, to worship me. So God the Father can actually help you in your walk, in your holy walk. Hmm, okay. 
The Bible says, I am Jehovah your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye shall not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, ye shall ye not do. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk in there, therein. I am Jehovah your God. So God can help us to do it. Number two, why we are to be holy and how can we be holy? We got a great high priest that's holy. Our Lord Jesus Christ is, is definitely holy. If you, went into the holy. if you went into the tabernacle or the temple later on, there were three sections, right? You had the outer court, and then you had, of course, the holy place, where these other items I just had mentioned, and then you went, the high priest went one time a year into the Holy of Holies. In there was an Ark of the Covenant, as we mentioned some time back, that inside there was the table of showbread, not a table, excuse me, a golden pot of manna, I'm sorry. Golden pot of manna, what else was in there? The Ten Commandments and... Aaron's rod that budded, okay? It was overlaid gold, pure gold, and everything. And then those two cherubims with their giant angel wings touching each other. And they were over the mercy seat, which was arrayed on top of the, the Ark of the Covenant. And that's where the blood was applied. And, of course, applied all over that mercy seat in a, a representation of the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, centuries later, they would stand for us in our salvation well, in that blood, there on the mercy seat, the outer court, the holy place, the holy of holies, the nation of Israel was arranged in a threefold way. The congregation, the priesthood, and the high priest. Now, isn't that interesting? The outer court, the holy place, the holy of holies. So we said here, the congregation, the priesthood, and then the high priest. Israel's sanctification, Israel's separatedness, Israel's holiness reached its final culmination in the high priest. He wasn't perfect. He sinned. He needed the blood applied for him too. Jesus didn't. He was a perfect lamb without blemish and without spot as he went in. And as, can you picture him in the holy place in heaven? In the tabernacle of, of, of the glory land. Peculiar. We are, we are a peculiar people, a zealous people of good works. And God has set us apart. Holiness. What was on, what was on the high priest? He would have a, a crown and a, a miter picture right here in the front. And on, on the front of that, it would say, Holiness unto the Lord. The first thing God saw as that high priest went into the Holy of Holies once a year to make atonement for the sins of the nation was holiness unto the Lord. What else did he have? He had, remember the different jewels on his chest, the 12 jewels that represented the, the nation, the 12 tribes of Israel? Then he had them up here on his shoulder. You remember the two shoulder ones where he had the 12, six on one side, six on the other? Oh, my soul. Jesus Christ is our great high priest. And when Jesus Christ goes before the Father, he is the epitome of holiness unto the Lord. He carries, just like that high priest, as a symbol, he carries on his shoulders you and me. Come on. Come on. Holiness is especially important, and this is one of the blessings of holiness. He carries us on His shoulders when we feel like we cannot be carried any longer. The jewels on His chest, six and six, what is it a symbol of? Of the twelve tribes. He not only carries us on His shoulders before God the Father in holiness, He who is holiness, holiness unto the Lord, He carries us on His heart. I don't know about you, but that's precious to me. Next time you hear someone preach on holiness, it's not just, well, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this, I can't do that. What about the things you can do? And you've got a great high priest, for we have not a high priest. Oh, boy. I didn't plan to go there. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. 
What does the scripture have to say? Hebrews 4. All right. Verse 12, Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God, if you know the scripture, say it with me. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why when a preacher preaches and you wonder, where did, did he know I was doing that? No, he just preached the word. And the word touched and driven it, the sword right through the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. Let's read that one phrase again. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What's the grace and help in time of need? Grace, he carries us before the Father. And mercy, he loves us and shows it from his heart. And holiness, he is accepted by the Father because the Father is holy and the Son is holy. And there's one more that helps you out. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is holy. Preacher, you mean the Holy Spirit can help me be holy? Yeah, he sure can. That we are to be holy. We have a great high priest and a God the Father who is holy. That same Spirit is holy. I had some verses I did want to read a few to you. Exodus 25, 22. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Number 7, 89. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat. Hold on, don't let me lose you, because I'm almost done. From off, what voice? Speaking from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony, from between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him. What is the representation? The Shekinah glory of God upon the mercy seat. And that same Shekinah glory speaks out. All right, Miss Angie, I don't have a tabernacle to go to, but I have a tabernacle I'm living in. And I have the same, just like you, the same Holy Spirit of God, which that Shekinah glory represented in the, in the over, covering the mercy seat and between the cherubim and the glory of the light and the shining so bright of God Almighty and His Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit of God lives inside of you. Preacher, I can't be holy. I don't see how I can be holy. Then look inward to the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And that same Holy Spirit and that same great high priest and that same God the Father will help you to be holy Holiness unto the Lord. The Bible says we are a kingdom of kings and priests unto God. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that, this whole, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Why? 
Why are you not your own? You've been saved. You've been separated unto the God of the universe. And you wear his colors. And you wear them on your heart. He wears them on his shoulder and heart for you and me. We wear them in our lives in the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. And that high priest goes before the Father. Romans 8, who prays for us? The Son of God prays for us at the Father's right hand, and the Holy Spirit prays for you. That's why there is not one Christian can say, I cannot fulfill that command that the Lord gave me to be ye holy as I am holy. We have the Spirit, the Son, and the Father at our disposal and God's Word to help us to live holy. Wear your ribbon of blue. Put it in your Bible. Think about it this week and say, God, I want to be holy as you are holy. Let's separate ourselves unto the Lord. You know, this old world needs separated Christians did you hear me? This whole world needs separated Christians. Why do we use the world's means to draw the world to Christ? That's extra. We are to be a separated people. They, they know what they've got in the world. They see what they've got, all the heartache and the problems with sin that Brother Bob spoke about this morning. They need some help and hope. And living a life unto the Lord, we're not any better than anybody else except for the fact that God saved us. And that's pretty special. Just as Israel wears the blue colors, the ribbon of blue, may we wear the Lord's colors and be found faithful to Him. Let's bow for prayer. Would you stand, please? Amy's going to go to the piano. Maybe there's some things in your life that you need to confess and make right with the Lord tonight. Maybe you haven't been as holy as you need to be holy. Let God the Holy Spirit talk to your heart and help you. He's not there to condemn you. He's, yes, He judges our sins, but it's for our good to draw us to Christ, to be like Him, and to get help from our high priest, and to know we have God the Father who loves us so much He sent His Son to die for us. They're for us. They're not against us. They're for us. May we seek Him tonight. He will be found of us. Holiness unto the Lord. It's a good thing. Would you make an altar in your heart right there at your seat then? Maybe something the Lord has touched you in your life that you need to be more like Christ. He will help you to do that. We have a great and mighty God. I don't feel that He would ever give us a command that He will not give us the power and the ability to fulfill that command as we separate ourselves unto Him. Wear the ribbon of blue in your heart. Be true and faithful as he has been. front of your bulletin today was it is good for me to draw near to God Psalm 73 28 it's a good thing to draw near to God we're the children of the King not because of our goodness but because of his goodness and grace let's thank him more for saving us let's praise him more for his holiness
You can look up this way. All right, now we're going to switch from blue to green. Okay? Daniel, why don't you come and tell us what we have to do?